often say it, that if I could have the blood transfusions to become a Queenslander, I would. Alas, the process doesn't exist. So I love everything about Queensland, and I particularly love everything about Queensland tonight because the good people of Ipswich West and a big chunk of people in Anala and lots of local government elections have absolutely wiped the giggle off Stephen Miles' face. The bloke who thought that uh, he could get through giggling about youth crime is now hitting the reality of leading a government that no longer has the benefit of the doubt of the people of Queensland. This is a bloke who, in the lead-up to this by-election, was caught lying in Parliament, only to turn around and think that the public was stupid enough to believe his explanation as to why. And after Scandal claimed another member of his government, there was an opportunity for a message to be sent. Now, in the seat of Anala, which is where Anastasia Palaszczuk had resigned from Parliament, they were able to win pretty easily, but there was still a significant swing in a place that is hardcore Labor. But equally, hardcore Labor is Ipswich West. Now, this beautiful part of Queensland wasn't putting up with sending Labor any other message than a kick in the teeth. You know how pathetic Stephen Miles is and how dumb he thinks the people of this electorate and every other electorate was, because when he was standing doing the how to vote thing yesterday, there he was with the Queensland state of origin hat on. Somehow like, don't vote against me because I'm one of you. Come on. You saw literally scenes on television news last night where people were just walking past him when it came to how to vote, so they'd give him a couple of words on the way through. Now, of course, there's another little detail here, that there was only just a bare few candidates that were running. There was no Greens that were running and the field was pretty tight because there's going to be a state election later this year. So this is a by-election to replace a Labor MP for just a few months before everyone goes back to an election later in the year. But this was the opportunity to kick them in the teeth. But what about the games that were being played around this by-election in somehow the hope that if the Labor Party held on to the seat, or it was a particularly tight margin, he'd be able to say, don't worry, the worst of it's behind us, let's all start spinning and telling lies like we always do in the lead-up to an election, and we will be able to win. What am I talking about? Well, one of the candidates that was running, in fact, the person who had the number one spot on the ballot, was the Legalised Cannabis Party. Now, I'll have a bit to say about the legalising of cannabis a little bit later in the show, because we're getting some more evidence that there's a growing number of Australians, again... We can agree or disagree about whether that's the right thing to do, but there's a growing number of Australians that are actually showing via the ballot box that this is an issue that they want to back in. But this was the how-to-vote card that was handed out by the Cannabis Party in Queensland. Now, you can see there are no preferences offered for the second, the third or the fourth box. There was just the number one. Now, in state elections, this government has changed the rules from a just vote one system to a preferential system because, as they expect to have a lower Labor vote, they expect to follow the elbow lead, where the preferences from, among others, the Cannabis Party and the Greens will get them over the line. So you had this being handed out by the union movement on Saturday. Now, this was, do you support the Cannabis Party? Do you support cannabis being legal? So a union decided to fill in the suggestions for whom you should preference in this by-election. And funnily enough, the one that you should preference, the one at the bottom of the list, but number two in preferences would be the Labor Party candidate. Now, basically lying to people that that is the choice of the legalised cannabis party when the legalised cannabis party's position was vote one for us and we don't care what you do with the rest of your ballot was a pretty obvious attempt to create a scenario where whatever percentage that wasn't able to vote for the Greens but was going to move towards legalised cannabis was going to automatically then start to move their support behind Labor in the hopes that they would be able to hold on to the seat. Well, it's a trick, and it was a dirty trick, and it's an example of how the Labor machine, while the politicians are very unpopular, the Labor machine is ruthless, shameless and very effective in Queensland. Now, also, remember, the unions are counted as independent organisations. They're not part of the Labor Party. So under all of the spending cap laws that have been put in place, what we foreshadowed, what I told you about when these laws were passed, well, every other party 
bar the Labor Party, will only be able to spend this much money. I think it's about $100,000 per seat. But every single union in Queensland can also spend the same amount per seat. But there are 25 separate independent unions, which means there's a 25 to 1 money and muscle advantage for the Labor Party going into this next state election. And you saw how they tried to use that money, use that muscle in Ipswich West. Here's the LNP's Jared Bly. Australian Workers' Union volunteers in green cannabis shirts were packing up and getting into AWU official vehicles. So if the Labor Party say they had nothing to do with this campaign, that's rubbish. Again, more deceit, more lies, more chaos. And it's all well and good for this to be discovered on election day. And it's all well and good for this stuff to be exposed by the media who is only focused on really one seat on election day. But what is going to happen at the state election when every single seat is up for grabs and because of early voting, and we know about a third of people vote early, will this trick be repeated in every single seat for a few weeks before the state election? Now, again, it's not because the voters are dumb, but for obvious reasons, the voters assume that the system wouldn't allow something like that. That the only people who can hand you a how to vote are people who actually represent a political party, or in this case, a candidate running. Instead, no, this is a third party, independent advocacy group who's given exactly the same access to voters as political candidates. So this dirty trick we have seen, we now have our eyes peeled to look for it in the lead-up to the Queensland election. If you are living in Queensland watching us in whichever way you normally do, firstly, thank you very much. Secondly, can we find out how I can get the blood transfusions? Uh, pass the law. I'm not suggesting you need to... Anyway, you get the point. Uh, but thirdly, you need to tell us when this stuff's happening. Take photos of the types of little dirty tricks that you can see and send me emails, paul at skynews.com.au. But as for the actual result, the reason the smile is off Miles's dial. Well, the numbers, and by the way, the Queensland Electoral Commission has taken way too long to count this. This is a one-off by-election and we're still under 70% of the total vote counted. This is weird, but anyway. The Labor Party's down by 15 and a bit percent. This is on the raw vote. The LNP is up by almost 19 points. One Nation was down by four points and legalised cannabis was up by 10 points. So if you're just uh, adding... 10% to 35%, that's 45%, but obviously that's not enough to get them there. If you were able to add 39.1 plus 10.8, well, then the LNP is going to get there. But, of course, preferences from One Nation don't always go 50-50. In fact, they actually sort of maybe two-thirds, maybe two-thirds, will end up going to the LNP. So we'll all wait, watch and see. Current 2PP shows the Libs in front. Uh, and most likely they're going to win the seat, but with 30% of the votes still out there to be counted, who knows what's about to happen. For his part, the giggler was not smiling today. Well, holding on to particularly Ipswich West was always going to be very hard. I said that. Um, this result, these results are clearly very bad. Uh, I was expecting a bad result, and they're even worse than that, clearly. They wanted to send us a message that we need to work harder, particularly on cost of living and on community safety. For his part, David Christofuli is not counting his chickens, is not measuring the curtains, but for obvious reasons, has greater sense of hope and inevitability of what the election result may be towards the end of the year and that he is looking pretty good to be the next Premier of Queensland. This state needs change and tonight residents in two Labor Party heartlands said enough is enough. And I want to thank them very, very much for it. Now, I think David Crucifulli is the real deal. I think the LNP is ready to govern. But you know that we felt the same way four years ago. Four years ago, it felt like the absurdity of the Palaszczuk government was going to come to an end, but, of course, they ended up increasing their majority. Now, thankfully, we have an electoral result, not just an opinion poll, and opinion polls are turning very negatively against this government. But this government, while bad at public policy, is very good at politics, is very good at building a system which is to their advantage, hence what I was saying before about the way that how to votes are handed out. So for there to be a breaking of the cycle of Labor being good at elections but bad at governing, people need to move their vote. 
which is why I want to pay attention to some of the local council election results that were taking place also right across Queensland yesterday. Now, it shows that the Brisbane Lord Mayor was re-elected. He is a member of the LNP. This was really interesting because the assumption was that the Greens were going to grow and they were a chance of being able to use their preferences to be able to help the Labor Party get over, but that's an optional preferential system at local government areas as opposed to uh, the state government areas. But that's good. Liberals held on to the biggest council area in the country, so that bodes well for the upcoming elections. There was no move to the left in the Gold Coast, so further down into the southeast, where the Liberal Party, the LNP, uh, are pretty strong down there. No signs of a change that's happening there. And a particularly concerning sign for the Labor Party is what's happening in Townsville. Now, uh, Jenny Hill has been the mayor for a long time, been around local politics for even longer. Uh, I have always got along very well with her. But there's obviously crime problems in Townsville and people wanted to show that any chance they could to send a message they did. So, again, with a still significant portion of the vote that is out to be counted, tonight, Jenny Hill is losing to the One Nation candidate and it's by a couple of thousand votes. Now, whether that margin is going to close or not, again, we'll all wait, watch and see. The idea that we don't know who's going to be the mayor of Townsville the day after a local government election. There's a lot about the Queensland Election Commission, but whatever. But the point is, is that despite the fact that things like youth crime have been issues in the past for Townsville, they keep sending Labor people back into power. Now, you can pretty much count that there are definitely three, maybe four, um, seats that are in and around the Townsville area. The Catter Australia Party has one, the Labor Party has three. That's including one of those people who says that uh, locals that are complaining about youth crime is just part of a... LNP mob, a media beat-up. But if Jenny Hill isn't returned as the mayor, then there is a move on in Townsville for David Crucifulli to become the next Premier of Queensland. He needs to be able to move some votes in places like Townsville. Now, if they can move one of those seats, they get one seat closer, but it is a further sign of what is starting to happen in Queensland. But wait and watch this space. Also worth noting, though, the LNP needs to uh, probably do better on the Sunshine Coast. You see, after the last state election, a couple of LNP members lost to Labor MPs, and it seems they're not going straight back into the arms of the LNP. There's a bit of a tealy mayor that looks like she is going to win. Uh, she was a candidate and become the next mayor. So it's a beautiful state. As I say, if I could be a Queenslander, I know all of the different politics of everything from Charters Towers to the Gold Coast and all in between, and it does seem like it is moving in the right direction. But this is a devilish mob. This is a devilish mob who have taxpayer-funded polling, taxpayer-funded um, media machine that's able to pump out any message they possibly can. They have the advantage of both incumbency and the lead-up to the Olympic Games. So, Queensland, it's up to you. It's up to you to convince your neighbours and your friends and your family that it is time to make a change. I look forward to watching that change happen and cheering it on, but it's up to what the good people of Queensland do, not what those of us hope they do, but we hope they do.